So uh, at the very basics, when we refer to a tree, what is a tree? Uh, and a tree is very simply uh, a long lived organism plant. Um, it's technically a perennial. Uh, again, perennial, uh, last week we discussed perennials, comes from the Latin per annus, meaning through years. Uh, trees are definitely that, uh, but they are their own uh, category. They are their own type. Um, when we talk perennials, we're talking herbaceous perennials, uh, sedums, echinaceas, um, clematis, uh, massive, massive amount. But when we talk trees, Normally, we're talking about a hard wooden stem, something that gets massive, uh, you know, in our yards, upwards 30, 40 feet out in, uh, in California, in the Valley of the Giants, hundreds and hundreds of feet tall. Uh, longest living thing ever to be on our planet, biggest living thing ever to be on our planet are trees. And what do they bring to us? They bring so much uh, oxygen. Uh, shelter, uh, fuel, food, biodiversity. So trees really are essential uh, for life as we know it, uh, and also aesthetic and whatnot. We're going to go into uh, a lot of this. Um, I've got my notes here. I always like to show them. My notes are simply the PowerPoint so I can stay on track because I can digress really quick. I could be uh, absolutely amazed about uh, the size of trees. Uh, and talk about that for way too long. So when we talk about a tree uh, or even a shrub, uh, there are key elements we have to look at. Okay, so we're going to start from the ground and we're going to come up. Uh, and the ground are the roots. The roots are essential. Uh, it's what stabilizes the tree. It's what locks it into the ground. Uh, they act as anchors. Uh, they act as support so it doesn't fall over in the wind. Uh, but they're also essential for the uptake of water and nutrients so that the tree can undergo photosynthesis. Um, so we don't see the roots, but the roots are massively important and they're worthy of consideration when we're thinking about trees, um, about how uh, expansive this root system is gonna get. It's not so much an issue here, but uh, in, uh, on the East Coast, uh, there's massive mature maple Look amazing, gorgeous trees. I adore them, but landscaping under them can be really hard because of that dense mass root system. Uh, you don't want to hurt the tree, but you need to do work and it can be real difficult. The trunk, not really much more to go on on that. The trunk is like the trunk of our body. All of the important stuff is happening in there. Tons of stuff traveling backwards and forwards. Uh, it's, it's the main protection. Uh, it's what keeps the tree safe, it, it keeps its stability, uh, and it supports both the roots and the branches. So there isn't many other parts. I mean, if we cut into it, and then we start looking at all of those parts, absolutely. But for what we need to know, the trunk is massively essential, um, but there's not really much more to go into it uh, that we're looking at. The part we mainly look at when we're thinking about a tree <clears throat> property because we're not when we're doing this a lot of times we're not talking about the science of the tree um or you know uh how it actually works the life of it we're talking about how it fits into our landscape how it fits into our garden and that's where the crown of it comes in excuse me chilly out here i need my coffee um so when we think about the crown of a tree uh, and that could be anything. That can be uh, the limbs on an evergreen on a spruce tree. can be the apples on an apple tree. And we're talking about branches and limbs and twigs and foliage and flowers and fruits. And all of that makes it up. Now, not every tree is going to have everything. Um, you're not going to get a fruit, per se, on a spruce tree. You will get a cone. You're not going to get a cone on an apple tree. You're not going to get a noticeable fruit on a hawthorn tree. Uh, you're not going to get a noticeable flower on a birch tree or a spruce tree. So again, this all falls into the aesthetic. But all of those parts uh, can make up the crown of the tree. Uh, and if we understand uh, what that is and what we're looking at and the spread of the crown and the height of the crown, then we can start to understand 
uh, exactly uh, what it is we're looking at. So another one is why do we have trees? Um, in a landscaping point of view, uh, a tree uh, is an investment. Um, it takes up a, a big amount of space, depending on the tree. You can get smaller trees like this. Uh, behind these, we have weeping paraganus. Uh, this is get tall, but it'll stay quite willowy. But you can also get trees uh, that'll have a spread on them of uh, 15, 20, 25 feet. So we have this, thing, uh, this, this, this plant, this, this, this organism that is going to live a massive amount of time uh, and it's going to take up uh, space and it's not going to want to be moved. Once that tree's established after two, three, ten years, it's not getting moved, uh, not getting moved easily. They're always to move it, but the vast majority of the time, we're either committed or we're removing it. So why do we have them? We have them for any number of reasons. Uh, the increased biodiversity, the amount of life a tree holds is phenomenal, from uh, birds uh, to squirrels um, to raccoons uh, to insects, good and bad, to the flowers, to uh, beneficial and harmful bacteria. The diversity, to give an example, and, and I'm going to go like, you know, to the, to the far end of the spectrum. A giant redwood in California, from the time it's a seed till the time it falls over and completely decomposes, can host a million types of life uh, throughout its time. And that's everything from tiny fungal spores to beds. And they will live in these trees and everything in between. So they're massive. Other plants will live in trees. Uh, in, uh, in jungle settings, orchids uh, actually, that's why if you have an orchid, you plant it in a bark mix because orchids actually live on the side of a tree. So trees host life for other plants. Mosses grow on them, very healthy and add to it. So the, 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 the biodiversity, uh, they help stabilize our soil. They help provide shade. They can also block the wind. So they can help us save on our budget because we're not running the air conditioning or we're not running the heat as much. They can provide food. They can provide fuel. We don't really think of that in the landscape setting because very few people, I've never met somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to grow this tree to cut it down and burn it. Uh, we often buy our firewood, but that does come from trees. Yeah, a Christmas tree. We do a Christmas tree burn every year. A lot of fun. Um, the, 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 the air they clean. Um, you know, the aesthetic they bring. Uh, the mental health. Uh, the increase in property value. There is so much that a tree can bring to a property. That is why we invest in them. That is why uh, we promote them and we talk about them. And that's also why it's essential. Uh, when we're doing this, uh, when we're talking about trees, just selecting the right tree for yourself. Um, there's no one size fits all uh, ever in a garden. Um, two people might love hostas, but one person might not like variegation. Right there, you both love hostas, but there's a difference. Trees, it gets even more. Some people do not like evergreens. Uh, I, I see them all over. They're boring. They don't do anything. Other people go, no, evergreens are where it's at. You get uh, full privacy year round. Uh, you get a windbreak year round. So selecting the type of tree uh, is, is, is a very personal decision. And we have to consider what we're selecting it for. First and foremost, we consider the aesthetic. The shape, uh, the size, uh, the color, what it'll look like in the autumn. Maybe it's boring during the year, but it looks amazing in the autumn. And, and, and we love autumn. Maybe it does spring flowers, looks amazing in the autumn, nothing in the summer, but that's perfect because we're at the lake in the summer. Uh, so we look uh, at what we're growing it for. Do we want to attract critters to the garden? Um, is it full of berries? Uh, what are we doing? And then what is the purpose? Are we growing it purely for a purpose? Is it a privacy screen? Is it for food? Uh, I don't care if it offers any privacy. I want fresh apples. So we have to consider what our purpose is. Is it a purpose for years down the road where we say, oh, I'm going to plant this now 
Uh, and then in 10 years, I'm going to have some beautiful shade to sit under. Uh, the space, have to consider that because everything else uh, is going to come after that. We might want a massive canopy tree, but it's going to block out our whole backyard. So we have to go, uh, that's not really suitable. Now I got to go with a columnar tree. So we need to think of that. We need to think of, uh, is our area exposed? Um, is it damp? Do we get a lot of runoff water there? Or is it at the top of the hill, all the water runs away and it's in full sun? So we need to consider the exposure. Outdoor living, uh, the mess a tree might make. Is it going to drop uh, seed pods everywhere? Is it going to drop crab apples? Is it going to drop leaves? Uh, and is, is it going to drop that all over your patio furniture? So we need to have a look and go, okay, well, I want this tree here to give me some privacy when I'm uh, on my patio. However, that's not going to work. I need an evergreen. So we, we look at this whole picture. We keep all four seasons in mind, including winter. We might not be outside in winter. The tree will be. Is it suitable for that area? Is there going to be too much wind? If you have an exposed uh, property, wind is howling against it. Uh, snow gets plowed up against it. Might not be the best spot for a juniper. However, a blue spruce might be the way you go. So we need to consider that, not just for our aesthetic, but for the tree, because we don't want to be replacing it every year. Uh, we're not planting a tree with the ideal to dig it up. We're planting a tree that we go, oh my God, I am going to enjoy this every year moving forward. My, my children are going to enjoy this. So we think long term. We look at the big picture and we decide, <clears throat> excuse me, what is right for us. Um, you guys might be able to hear, I, I just want to say, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had a cold. I don't know if anybody had that cold that was going around. I feel great, but I can't take the back end of it. I can, and it, it's, it's almost like annoying now. Yeah, I, I'm, not even, I'm not even sick. I feel great. I'm not contagious. I'm up and at them, but I'm like, I'm, going, I'm like, cough, cough, cough. Really? Yes, and, that, and that's what I talked about for roots. And that, sorry, that's great. And this is what I'm saying about comprehension. That's what I was saying about space. So uh, you have to consider various uh, roots. Um, now, uh, a lot of trees that we plant, they don't have invasive roots anymore. That was a long time ago. Uh, there's a lot of bands uh, in the city, uh, certain willows. You're not allowed to plant in, uh, in the city because they'll actively seek out water mains because they're looking for water. Yeah, yeah, a, a willow will actually wrap around a water main and break it. Yeah, yeah, they, they've been outlawed. Uh, certain types of willows have been outlawed. Uh, in city, you can still plant them, but you need to be on an acreage or something like that. So a lot of the trees now are fine, but absolutely you need to consider that because if you put it right up against the house, those roots are going to hit the foundation. Now, they'll hit the foundation and they'll probably go straight down. But the point of the fact is, is that they're putting pressure on it. Okay, so that is, when I said space, absolutely consider that. Great point for clarification. So one thing I want to touch on, uh, Brandy and I, uh, I hear this a lot on social media or on the floor, and we're not even in tree log. Um, it's like annuals perennial. Uh, every year people go, oh, I can't remember which is which. Conifers are uh, deciduous. It's like a rave up in here. <laughs> That's okay. Somebody's car alarm is going off. Welcome to spring. We wouldn't trade the chaos for anything. Um, conifer versus deciduous. Conifer uh, is normally your needle trees, uh, evergreen, cone bearing, um, the spruce, the juniper. Uh, those are examples. The pine, those are examples uh, of a coniferous tree. Uh, a lot of people like them. They're hardy. Uh, they keep their structure, uh, their needles year round. And then we have the deciduous ones behind me. Even though this leaf is tiny, it's called a broad leaf because it's not a needle. Uh, they tend to drop their leaves. They also are the ones that we get the flowers from uh, and the fruits. So uh, deciduous trees tend to be in the variety of plants that we call angiosperms. 
which are uh, flowers. Uh, the conifers are uh, gymnosperms, uh, which are more spores. And that's how they uh, propagate. Uh, we don't really need to know much more about that, uh, except the, the, the deciduous trees and geosperms are where we get uh, cherries and plums and apples and pears from. Now, special shout out, uh, especially in Calgary, uh, we all do it. And have we been able to have one webinar where I don't talk about uh, fall in the winter? We're in spring. I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to have a, I'm the one who writes them. And I'm, <laughs> I know, I know, but we don't want to talk about it. Okay. Larch, we've got to give them a shout out. People love larch. They are absolutely suitable for city planting. Uh, and they are a deciduous conifer. They are a needle. They bear cones. They shed their needles. Really amazing. And they're the ones, when you're driving through the Rocky Mountains uh, here in southern Alberta, uh, September, October, and you see that huge swath of yellow right through the mountains, that's the larches turning. There's hiking trails purely built around the larches. Uh, amazing tree, uh, very suitable for our climate. Um, and they look amazing, and the needles aren't prickly, they don't hurt, they are so ridiculously soft. So, special shout out to the large, simply because it bridges the gap between the two. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm guilty of it, I, I do like going to the mountains for large season. Well, I like going to the mountains for every season. Yeah, yeah. So, oops, I want to put that one to the back. So what we're going to talk about now um, and then we're going to talk about existing trees. That's why I said we have a lot to cover here. So we know what tree we want. We've made our decision. Uh, we want an apple tree uh, to give us food. We're not growing it just for the aesthetic. We're not growing it for privacy. It's going to have a place of honor, full sun. We're going to harvest the apples. We're going to gobble them up because they're delicious. How do we plant the tree? Okay. So first and foremost, uh, we've... Uh, and now I'm taking into consideration again, uh, we've decided on our area. We know our distance to the house, to the foundation. We've locked up. We've made sure there's no overhead wires. We know the distance to the fence. We know this area is full sun, suitable for an apple. So we have all of that figured out. So we know our space. We know our purpose. We know why we're getting this tree. We've done our homework. Okay. So planting, I'm going to grab this little shrub here, okay? So when we plant, we want to dig the hole a little bit wider than the pot, okay? Um, sometimes we're planting in an existing bed or next to rocks and we don't have a ton of room. But if you can make it nice and big, make it nice and big. And you don't want to go deep because uh, a lot of times uh, people will think, oh, well, if I go uh, this much wide, I should go this much deep. What you want to do is you want to keep, you can go deep to amend the soil, but then you want to bring that soil level back up so that the soil in your pot is that, oh, somebody just watered this one. I'm making a mess. Um, the soil in your pot is, uh, is level with the existing soil where you're planting it. You don't want to go too deep. Uh, it's a surefire way to kill a tree. I have seen trees killed that way in a landscape setting. Uh, if you plant a tree and you see it suffer relatively quick, check the depth, scrape that soil away, and make sure your depth is good. Then we're going to amend our soil. We're going to make sure it's loose. We're going to get our tree out, and we're going to use, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. We're going to use a compost and a mic, okay? And we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit more, okay? So now we've got our uh, fertilizer. Mike isn't technically a fertilizer, but we have our amendment in the hole. We're going to backfill, and we're going to firm. We're going to use our hands. We're not going to stomp down. We will damage the roots. Again, I'm going to make a mess because somebody watered, which I'm glad they did, but I'm going to come around really quick. You can see on the surface here, there's roots, okay? 
So if somebody decides that they want to make sure that their key is uh, is turned down, and I've seen this happen, they start stomping. Well, they're crushing and breaking those roots, and you are damaging your tree. So you really, really want to be careful uh, when you're doing that, that uh, you're not damaging. Firm with your hand, a little bit, firm it. A little bit more, firm it. It will take some time, but it's better to invest that time. Am I talking an extra 10, 15 minutes? We're not talking a day. Uh, to ensure your tree's best chance of survival. Make sure your tree is straight. Don't plant it on an angle. It's always good to have somebody come. And what I always do is I set myself up on the compass, okay? Check the east-west, check the north-south. Once the tree is safe, then you keep back filling. When you're putting in your soil, the temptation can be to add only the good stuff, only a fresh topsoil in a compost mix. Add some of the existing soil that you dug out of the hole. The reason for that, I add uh, topsoil, peat moss, and sea soil, and that's all I put around my tree. Oh my God, my tree's gonna love it. It is absolutely gonna love it. It's rich, it's soft, it's loose. Those roots are gonna explode. Then they're gonna hit the existing soil. And they're gonna be like, oh, we don't, have, we don't have the strength to get here. And you're gonna stunt it. By mixing in some of that existing soil, you've set the tone for where it's gonna be. So you have some loose soil, you have some rich soil that is gonna feed the tree, but you also have some adversity, which every plant needs. We're firm, we're backfilled, we got our mics going, it's straight, we like it. Now we water. And you water, water, water. You don't want your tree to be hurting for water when it's first planted. Uh, water every day for a couple of weeks, taper off to every two or three days for the next couple of weeks. Then you can start watering as needed. You don't want to shock your tree before that. And that's planting. And you'll probably notice if you've attended any of our other webinars, planting is really very similar. Uh, whether you're planting a four-inch geranium, a one-gallon uh, hosta, or a 25-gallon blue spruce, the size of the hole is different. What you might add might be different, but you're digging a hole. You're adding something. You're watering. You're making sure the plant's healthy. You're not damaging roots. The, the principles are the same. The practices vary depending on what you're doing. Okay, that's our new trees. Now we go out and we look at our existing trees, and that can be our Catoniaster hedges, our columnar aspens, our apple trees. And we say, okay, what's happening? What's happening in the garden? Time deck, yeah, we got a lot to get through, but we're on track. Um, uh, please note, if we do run over, um, like Brandy said, there'll be a blog post. We got you covered. There will still always be time for Q&A. We will stick around. We don't, we, don't, we don't run out of here at 11. I promise you that. So how are the trees right now waking up? What is going on? Um, and it's the exact opposite of why they fall asleep. Again, I have to talk about the autumn. So trees fall asleep primarily because it's getting darker. There's less photo period. The leaves aren't photosynthesizing also getting colder things are starting to slow down have you ever noticed uh it can be hard to get moving when it's cold as opposed to in the summer where you're skipping down the street we move easier when it's warm same with trees so the sap isn't flowing the same when they're sluggish when they're cold with extra light comes the warm so now it's warming up things are moving that photosynthesis is happening the frozen ground is breaking moisture is getting into there the tree is drinking that up. It's warm. It's ready to start photosynthesizing. The light is there. And we're getting bud breaks. Those leaves are coming out. And what we have now is we have this abundance of sunlight. We have this abundance of moisture. Even in the spring, when I'm referring to moisture, I'm not just talking about the snow melting, talking about the rain. Okay, spring is a rainy period. That moisture is essential for the tree. A cloudy day, we go, oh, it's a cloudy day. That tree is still photosynthesizing. 
Um, you can still get a sunburn on a cloudy day. I know that because I have seen sunburns on a cloudy day. Uh, the UV is still there. It is harder. You might have to be outside for four hours to get a sunburn on a cloudy day as opposed to 20 minutes on a sunny day, but it is still there. So the tree is photosynthesizing and all of those factors, the warmth, the light, the moisture, everything happening, it's abundant active growth and now it has broken dormancy. We have bud break. So how can we help our trees for the upcoming season? What are we looking at? We're gonna inspect them for winter damage where they need to be pruned. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna look if we need any controls. Maybe last year uh, we had some bugs or we had some disease. We're gonna weed the bait. Trees are breaking dormancy. So are other things that includes our dandelions, our creeping bell, all of those good things. We need to look at that. Uh, we need to amend the soil. Amending the soil of an existing plant is absolutely important. That tree is constantly pulling up nutrients to have that canopy, to have those apples. Giving it uh, some nutrient fat is essential. Fertilizing, um, mulching, we've got mulch, and watering, all essential. So now we're gonna dive into each one of those topics in a bit more detail. So my hands are cold, it's hard to separate my papers. Oh yeah, mm, good, good choice for live on location, Brandy. Maybe, maybe next time let's do live on location from Starbucks. They'll be like, oh, why did you bring a tree into Australia? <laughs> yeah, for science. This is science, please. I also have a copy for science. Um, okay, we're inspecting and pruning. So what we're looking for uh, right away, the easiest one to see is any winter damage. Uh, maybe the tree has been, uh, you know, a tree or shrub. Uh, we've shoveled snow onto it. We've broken some branches. Uh, the weight of the snow has broken some branches. Uh, any number of things can happen. Hard frost has burnt some pits. We're looking uh, for, for the obvious things, okay? And what we're looking for when we're pruning are the five feet. There's four bad, there's one good, okay? Dead, uh, disease. Uh, damaged and dangerous. So those are the ones we look at. The branch is broken. Uh, it's hanging on just by some bark. It's dead, damaged, we're getting rid of it. Okay? Uh, ones that we, we guarantee are dead. Uh, damage, it's still there. It, it's hanging on. There's still some of that hardwood inside, but it's split and it's dangling. Probably not coming back. It's better to prune it properly for the tree's health. Disease, uh, black knot is a good example. Uh, maybe your tree was riddled with uh, powdery mildew uh, and you had to prune some branches off for that. Um, it's a better idea to treat that kind of thing rather than prune. We will be talking about that. And then dangerous. Dangerous can be as simple as a branch like this at eye level. I walk by without my glasses. I take a branch to the eye. Consider other people too. Little kids, tall people like me, everywhere in between, can also be a big branch uh, that is now overhanging uh, your home, uh, your car, your garage, your patio where you might be sitting. You might need to look at that getting taken off. If you are unsure, please ask a professional. Uh, there, there, the, the internet is littered with horror stories about people who try to prune a branch themselves. Uh, Best case scenario, you do it. Okay, great. It goes off without a hit. However, some of those branches, you can really run the risk of damaging your tree even worse. And, and, and the one that we never want to consider damaging yourself. Okay. You take off a branch. Uh, some of those branches can be hundreds of pounds. You've now suddenly changed the balance on the tree and the tree will kick back. If you're not secured, it can throw you out the tree. You have a chainsaw, a saw, sharp pruners. It can be a disaster waiting to happen. Please, please, please take off. Small branch like this at eye level, take your pruners, snip it. Okay, not worried about that. Big branches, please be careful. It's just not worth it. Park your car on the street if it's going to hit your car. going to hit your tree. Get a hold of an arborist. Yeah. Speaking of that, I don't have the number. If you're all looking for an arborist, listen to our podcast uh, on trees. 
Uh, we interviewed uh, an arborist, uh, amazing guy. Uh, we had a really good time interviewing with him. Uh, and we give him a shout out. He has his own company. Great person to talk to. But speak to a professional arborist, please, please, please. And desirable. When we're pruning for desirable, that's pruning for state. So I look at this tree and I go, oh, I love it. I don't like this one. This one seems weird to me. I snip it back. It's healthy. It's alive. There is no damage, but it looks weird. I snip it back. Now I've got the shape that I want. Now I've got the structure I want. And that's more important. So always prune for desirable last. You want to prune for your other ones first. And then, and I can't go into this in massive detail, but make sure you follow correct pruning methods. You want to cut to a color. You want to do jump cuts. Make sure you use the correct pruners. You have a branch, again, small branch like this, your little side pruners are going to do it. You have a branch this big, and you start trying to use these, you're going to damage your pruners, and you're going to damage the tree. You're not going to get through it cleanly, and you're going to be working it. You're going to be ripping it. You're going to end up needing new pruners, and you're going to end up damaging your tree. Use a saw. Use bigger pruners, telescopic ones. Use the right tool for the job. You'll protect your tool. You'll protect your tree. If you prune correctly, you do not have to use a pruning paint a pruning paste that is purely for if you're doing a uh, a dangerous one you can't prune it correctly for whatever reason you can look at using that correct pruning techniques you should never have to use that so uh, there are some methods included brandy will include them in the blog post uh, and again you can hit us up for more details uh, you can do some research you can look it up um, but yeah Learn to prune correctly, it'll save you a ton of hassle moving forward. Applying control. So a lot of times we go out and we look at the trees in our garden, uh, we may not see any spider mites on them. We may not see aphids, we may not see rust because the leaves aren't there, there's no indication that they're there. However, there is a very, very good chance that if we had a problem last year, it'll still be there. Problems do not go away on their own. Um, they don't for us. I've tried it before. Um, I am very much, excuse me, the idiot guy who goes, I don't need to go to the doctor. I'll get better. Uh, and then I've got a massive infection and I'm taking all kinds of antibiotics and I'm sick as a dog. If I'd gone to the doctor, he would have been like, oh, we're going to stop that before it gets to an infection. And I would have been fine. Problems don't go away on their own. Like, oh, my finger doesn't bend. It'll get better. Probably not. Okay, go get help. We do it for ourselves. We need to do it for our trees. So if last year your trees had a ton of spider mites, now before the leaves are coming out and there's a ton of places for them to hide, use a product like Andal. Get in there and do a preemptive spray. If we had a uh, powdery mildew, um, get in there with a uh, fungicide, a broad spectrum fungicide. There's sprays, there's powders. Um, you have leaf miner. We've got living biological agents. We have nematodes. I'm showing it over here. For some reason, I thought the camera was here. Hi, hello. I, I've only been doing this uh, now for uh, 42 minutes. Uh, no, 37 minutes. I can't tell time either, apparently, today. I am just knocking this out the park today. So we have biological agents to help you uh, get to where you need to be. There are a ton of options. But if you remember what you had last year, maybe you didn't have it, but your neighbor did. Okay? You've got to look at that. And as always, prevention is the best. Make sure it's clean. Uh, make sure we're on top of it before it becomes a problem. People will spray and they'll be like, oh, I don't have any fungus this year and they'll stop spraying. If you had it or your neighbor has it, there's still a chance. Keep applying that spray. Don't let it get in because once a powdery mildew is in, the best you can do is stop the spread. You're not going to get rid of it. So you want to make sure it's clean. Get those leaves out. 
You want to make sure it's healthy, water, and fertilized, and pruned accordingly. Make sure it's got good airflow. That's a desirable prune. Take out some of the inside growth so that the air can get through and that your tree can breathe. That's what we're looking to do when we apply our control. Weeding. Uh, anybody who's followed along with me on anything I've talked about knows uh, I don't consider a plant a weed. I consider a location uh, to be where the weed is. So a dandelion in my lawn, perfectly acceptable. That's not a weed. I want it there. A dandelion right next to my tomato is an enemy and it must be removed. So I don't consider the dandelion a weed. I consider where it is. Creeping bellflower, the same thing. And weeds at the base of our trees can rob nutrients. They can rob moisture. Weeds can form a thick carpet. It's hard to get the leaves out, so it's hard to clean up, uh, to get rid of aphids and spider mites and powdery mildew. So having it nice and clean around the base of a tree uh, can be essential. Be very careful when you're weeding uh, to not spray, and when you're hand weeding, you don't want to be digging in with a shovel like this, okay? Uh, a weeding spike, um, a small trowel. But I see people, I weed my flower beds with a shovel like this. So I'm going to get more roots. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not going to do this around my tree because, again, I'm going to cut into the roots that I want. So you want to be careful. And, again, prevention goes a long way. So putting down a landscape fabric, putting down a mulch, uh, it's going to help keep those weeds down. Uh, and getting rid of the weeds, it's going to allow more sunlight to get to the roots. It's going to allow that warmth we talked about. The weeds with the surface uh, roots aren't going to be stealing all of the moisture. The moisture can get deeper. Amending the soil. So we talked about that for a new planting. How do we amend the soil on existing trees? Now, if, if your tree is uh, 30 years old, and 30 feet high, probably don't need to amend the soil. The roots are so deep. But I'm talking about our trees that are one, two, three, four years old. They're still small. They still have a nice tree well. We need to help them. You want to use a compost, a volcanic mineral, a peat moss, a cocoa coir. Uh, we've done a whole thing on amendment. Have a look. Worm casting. Uh, put them down. Now, you want to cultivate gently. And that just means taking your cultivator and working it in. But sometimes, like that shrub I showed, those roots are on the surface. So it might be like doing it on a lawn. We're just going to top dress and allow the rain and us watering to leach those nutrients down into the roots. We don't want to cause the tree more damage by adding our amendments than the good we're trying to do. We're trying to make the tree healthy, ripping and tearing its roots is not the way to go about that. And the reason we're doing this is we're replenishing that organic material that the tree has depleted. And this is really important in our production trees, in our fruit trees. Um, it's important in every tree, absolutely. But our apple trees, the ones that are going to be producing the food we eat, they need a lot of help. It takes a lot of energy to put out an apple. Uh, we need to give it as much as we can it's like the equivalent on uh, the calorie intake for a uh, Olympic athlete versus me. I don't need that much, despite how many chocolate-covered pretzels I'm prepared to eat in a day. However, if you're an Olympian competing, you might be eating five, 6,000 calories a day. Think of your apple tree as that Olympian. You need to give it what it needs in order to perform and produce. Uh, your spruce tree might not need that much. Your spruce tree, you're like, hey, man, I just need you to do your thing. That's all. Much like me. I'm more spruce tree. Uh, I can't think of a famous hockey player. Some hockey player dude is more like your apple tree. I'm not a hockey fan. Sorry if anybody's a hockey fan. Uh, I, I don't know why, because I, I guess I'm in Canada. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I could name uh, soccer players, but that might be too upset. Um, Jeremy Jagger, is he still playing? Okay. Um, Jeremy Jagger did play, though. Yeah, so we're going to go with any he played for a long time. I know, he produced for a long time. There you go. That's the guy I'm going with. 
Thank you, Yamia. If you're watching this, let us know. He's not watching. Uh, fertilizing. Really, really important, especially in the young trees. Again, big, tall, mature trees. They absolutely can benefit from a deep root feeding. Uh, you might need to bring in an arborist to do it. For your younger trees, uh, it is essential. You want those roots growing. You want them to develop that heavy canopy. You want them to be growing themselves. With fertilizer, again, I'm just going to come over here quickly and grab a couple. So uh, I have a uh, tree fertilizer here. Uh, this one is water soluble. I mix it, I feed my tree, I water my tree, and I feed it at the same time. Maybe you don't have time for that. So we use a fertilizer state. Set it and forget it. Okay? Again, we're trying to think about, we need to fertilize the tree. Think of the fertilizer that best suits your lifestyle. Don't get hung up on numbers. Maybe, again, you've got a berry tree, a fruit tree. Use one like this. It's very specific. It is designed for it. And it's a shaken tree. Shake it down and away you go. Maybe you've only got a couple of trees, a couple of perennials, a couple of tomatoes, and all purpose is going to suit you. I'm going to come back to Mike. Mike is an amazing, amazing tree. It is perfect for fresh planting or transplanting. You cannot use this as a fertilizer. It needs to go direct on the root. It is a phenomenal product. It works so amazingly well. Infographic there on our roots with and without mite. But after your tree is planted, this is not going to do the job. You need to put it on the roots. So as, as much as mite is kind of in that fertilizer category, it is its own entity completely. And like I said, we fertilize give the tree those nutrients it needs to, to supplement it, mulch it, okay? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Yeah. It's a, so uh, only fertilize, um, great question. Uh, only fertilize when you see active growth. So if those buds aren't breaking, even if it's warm outside, don't fertilize. But the moment you see that leaf starting to emerge, start your fertilizer practice. Uh, don't wait until it's about to flower. You want to give it everything it needs. Uh, again, I'll make the comparison. An Olympic athlete doesn't do their first workout the day before their event. They're training three years prior. Same thing with fertilizer. We're not fertilizing when we're seeing a tomato, when we're seeing an apple. We're fertilizing beforehand. So the tree has everything it needs. So when that time comes, bam, it's, got, it's got what it's ready to do. So the moment you see that active growth, you want to start fertilizing. Great question. Um, mulching. Okay. Mulch is amazing for trees. It really is. Uh, we put it down, uh, we can use cedar mulch, we can use colored mulch, shredded mulch. Uh, it helps protect those roots. It allows moisture in, but then it traps moisture in, so the sun isn't stealing at all. It can be aesthetic, like I said, the fragrance of cedar, or the bright color of the red. Um, as mulch breaks down, in a forest, it's a natural mulch. When trees fall over, or branches, or bark, as it breaks down, it can feed the soil. It helps prevent weeds. There is a ton of benefit of mulching your new trees. Uh, and that might be uh, applying a mulch for the first time. It might also be replenishing a mulch because it has broken down over the winter. Don't go uh, too heavy. And the next one I see on the, on the next slide is how to mulch. Again, remember we said at the beginning about planting too deep? It's the same with mulch. You don't want mulch this deep around your stem. It can hold moisture on the stem. It's not allowing it to breathe. Uh, it's encouraging bugs. We don't want that. You want it to be a crater. Nice mulch. Where the stem is, it dips down into a bowl. We don't want it mounded up with the tree erupting out the middle like a volcano. 
We want it to look like a crater where something snaps in. Okay? And that's to allow the tree to breathe. It'll still do all of those jobs I said, but it's not going to damage your tree. So mulching is great. Very easy to do. Massively beneficial. Just watch out for that one misstep. How are we doing for time? Doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Okay. Watering. So a couple of slides to go through here. Um, on a mature tree, on an existing tree, the ground moisture should be sufficient. You might need to water. But on uh, your new trees, again, one, two, three, four, five years old, water them. Soaks the ground. And it's always a good idea to use a spot sprinkler. Big oscillating sprinklers aren't great. Great for lawn. They can be okay for your, your veggies, your flowers. Not great for trees. Small spot sprinkler, put it at the base of the tree, turn it on, walk away. And it just, and it just saturates the ground. A soaker hose coiled around the drip line. Works amazing. Turn it on nice and low and just let that water leach into the ground and heavily saturate it. I don't really recommend guns. Uh, these can make us a bit lazy. We go out and we go, and we get a puddle on the ground. We go, that's enough, and we go away. It's only this much water. It might not even reach this far down where the roots are. So it's a better idea to trickle feed your trees. Uh, running this uh, very gently for a day is way better than blasting this for 20 minutes. Might even be the same volume of water. So when you're watering, you want to look at that. It is essential at this time. Yeah, great. We're getting a little bit of rain in Calgary. But this past week was baking hot. Water is essential. The buds are breaking. When we said, how is it breaking dormant speed? Because of the light. The light means photosynthesis. Photosynthesis requires water. If it doesn't have it, it's not going to be able to do it very effectively. And your tree's going to be suffering at the beginning. We want to make sure that that tree isn't suffering. It's coming out of the gate, raring to go with its best possible ability. Ah. Uh, Check to make sure your conditions haven't changed. Um, maybe another tree was removed. Uh, so now it's in full sun, but that tree also isn't taking as much water now. Okay. Um, there's a number of, of factors that can change. We want to make sure we know what we're doing. Be wary of overwatering. That's not leaving this on all day. That's a good thing. Overwatering is going out to a new tree. I'm watering it every single day for an entire year. Those roots still on the surface are like, I don't need to go look for water. The water's coming to me. You want it to suffer. You want those roots to go, oh, I got to go look for water and go deep. Deep roots are where it's at. The tree will only get that with a little bit of adversity, okay? Again, I'll compare it to an athlete. If that athlete never works out, never pushes themselves never takes themselves to exertion and adversity, they're not going to have the strength to compete. Same with your tree. You want it to have everything it needs. It's fertilizer, it's sunlight, uh, it's amendment, it's moisture, but you want it to work for it. You want it to get a nice deep root system. Okay, and then the next slide is simply the drip line. Uh, I see people go uh, to a relatively mature tree and they water right at the stem. Uh, there's no real roots there to drink up that water. Uh, the drip line, Mother Nature drip. And if it has been a rainy day, not a thunderstorm, do not do it in a thunderstorm and lightning storm. Please do not hide under trees. Um, but in a rainstorm, you hide under a tree, you don't get rained on because the tree is like, I don't think so. You go to the drip line, which is the very edge of the tree, and there's water pouring off of it because it's all funneled there. That's where it is. So if you're running a soaker hose, run it around that drip line, not around the base. And that's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck on watering. So all of that combined is how we're going to pick trees. It's how our existing trees are going to do better. It's all applicable to our shrubs that we also love, that we never talk about. Sorry, shrubs. Nothing but love, though. Uh, and with that, a big thank you. I'm glad you could join us uh, from wherever you are. Hopefully your weather's a bit nicer than us. We're gray, little damp, a little bit cold, uh, but that's okay. It's spring. 
we need these days as well. Uh, we're not a few. we eight minutes over. That's okay. We still have Q&A.